right, I thought I'd do a quick demo on the uh, 12 mil corn cutter. So what we've got here is the corn cutter rolling pin with four mil guides. I've already started, as you can see. I've already got a few done there. So it's simple. Just roll it, place your mixture out on the table, and then just roll it out until it's all nice and flat, and you've got no more ridges left. And then it's just simple case of take the cutter, press down quite firmly, give it a little twist. Yeah. So what you're looking for, so you know they've done perfectly well. Can you see all the what's well, turned out all black around each one? Yeah, if you can still see mixture on this black area here, just press it back down, just give it another shake uh, until because basically what you're doing there is you're getting nice smooth cut edges on your on your finished bait. So it's nice and smooth. And a simple case, get your removal tool. And pop them out. Simple as that. Now, regards to cleaning them, you can either use a toothpick or I like to use this. This is my corn cutter removal tool. This is my cleaning tool. So it's just a cheap old fork. I've just bent one side. I just find it works a lot better. And just go down each channel, just popping it out. Like so. Well done. Just a little bit there. Ready to go again. Place it down, take the top off. So what I also like to do as well, can you see here it's just slightly raised. So it's nice and even all the time, so you get nice even cuts. Let's go over it again. Yeah. And you know every single piece is perfect then. Same again. Press down quite firmly, give it a little shake, take off the excess, just check make sure you've got the OC, it's all cut perfectly. The job's a bobby, just you nice some self some uh, nice little corn pieces. There's a couple of other things I'd like to mention when you come to using your corn cutter. You do need a nice smooth surface to uh, to work on. Uh, if you don't have access to a metal bench, um, what you need to get is a glass chopping board. You can either use a glass chopping board or a granite or a marble chopping board. Uh, I wouldn't advise using the wooden ones as they do tend to stick. Um, also, when it comes to cleaning your corn cutter, as you can see, you get all the little bits between the channels. Uh, what you need there is get yourself a nice stiff bristle brush and just give it a good scrub. Just get all the pieces out. I'm not going to go too crazy as I'm uh, still going to use it. Also, another good thing that the uh, corn cutter is great for is uh, when you usually do like your pop ups and you have that bit left over that's out of your out of your nozzle like your say like your witch's hat nozzle and things like that uh, you always tend to either break them off and roll them up or you try and force it through the end of the nozzle so you're not wasting any corn cutter that's what it's perfect for just get your mixture that's left out your nozzle just roll it out like so and you got yourself some nice little corn pieces to match your pop-ups you've just made. Don't worry about how big the uh, the area is that you're cutting onto because if you do get like any uneven pieces, like you get little bits there, like we don't want any of these ones, just just pop them out. Just pop them out, put it back with your mixture before you uh, put them into your tray. We don't want them ones. Removal tool, pop it in the back, pop them out. Jobs a bobby. Good bit of kit. Definitely need one in your bait armoury. 100%. Right, so I've got a couple of tips for you when it comes to making your corn pieces. Obviously, once you've finished and you've got all your nice 
Now to the perfectly uh, corn shaped pieces, the last thing you want to do is misshaping them when you come to boiling them. Obviously if you've got access to a large pan that's not a problem, you're just going to be picking the tray up or whatever you put them into and tip them straight in. Obviously if you're boiling them at home, you're going to be using like a chip pan or whatever you've got. Obviously you'll be using like a spatula say or something like that and you'll be scooping them out and obviously using a spatula and being quite a small bait and being soft, you're going to start misshaping them which is the last thing you want after you've just spent all that time getting them all nice and perfect. So the best thing to do uh, before you boil them is just leave them to dry. Leave them to dry for about, I'll probably say for about an hour or so. Uh, this way what will happen is they will toughen up slightly, they get a slightly harder shell. Uh, so when you do come to take them out of your container, your tray or whatever you've put them into, um, when you're using your spatula and you're scooping them up, you won't misshape them as easy. Uh, it's a it's a great way to do it, to, to make sure, don't worry, it's not going to affect the buoyancy or the... Uh, or they finish or anything like that just leave them to dry for a short while um, then you can take them out with ease without misshaping them as easily that's a great one right the next one obviously when you come to make your corn pieces you want them all different colors don't you? you want a yellow you want a pink you want an orange you want a white and obviously they'll what you're gonna to have to do then is make mix after mix after mix after mix after mix there's a work around that so what you can do is uh, make two mixes. So say like you've got a, a white one and you've got a pink one, a white and a pink. So what you do is, is I'll probably use your four mil. Uh, so there's two ways you can do it. So you can use your four mil, four mil guide, roll one out, roll the other one out, place one on top of the other. Then you've got a pink on the bottom and a white on the top, say. And then what you'll do then is, is probably go to either six or a five and you'll roll it again, just gently roll it back and forth until it started to obviously you want to try and utilize as much as the area as possible because obviously once you've uh, once you've rolled it out and you've got these two um uh, two different colors obviously when you take your excess and your bits and you start putting it back together well you've got yourself some swirly baits then i suppose yeah you can get some swirly ones uh, but yeah try and use utilize the the cuts as much as possible obviously once you've finished you'll have a pink on one side and the white and the other. How about that? After days. So when you come to put them on your bait, you'll have two different colours. You don't have to keep making mixtures. If you don't want to use the, the four mil guides, uh, when you do place an order, just pop a just pop a message in the notes and I do supply two mil versions. Uh, these have been supplied for people who want to make their own if they don't want to use the hook bait presses for making cart balls, uh, they use a two mil guide and what they'll do is they'll troll out the two mil and they can use it for uh Cork ball pop ups as well, but using the two mil guide is perfect for doing this this little this little method of two different colours. So you can do a two mil one, a two mil one, top of the other, four mil guide, go over it again, cut, 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 jobs are bobby. You've got one colour on one side, flip it over, colour on the other side. Happy days. Right, so when it comes to using the uh, super corn cutter. Uh, which is 100 pieces obviously if you're used to using the uh, the smaller version these are 25 i would say there is a bit of a knack to using the super corn cutter um obviously the channels uh, are a lot uh, closer together so uh, i do if you've been ordering them recently you will get a, a small removal tool to uh, to remove the uh, excess from the channels but obviously i just use me cleaning tool that's what i use for these ones right when it comes to using your super corn cutter and you've rolled your mixture out when you go to cut it what you want to do first is apply as much pressure as possible with two hands uh, don't forget to apply pressure to the center as well so just use your thumb apply uh, the pressure from one side here here thumbs and then obviously apply as much pressure as possible press 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 down then obviously fingers over the ends, one's on the side, and then give it a shake. And obviously, don't forget to apply pressure to the center as well. And it's the same principle. Uh, once you've used it and you've got it, and you'll start seeing the mixture move away from the edges, turn it over, like with the other one, what I did in the previous, uh, earlier on in the video, is make sure that uh, it's all cut perfect. Um, so obviously, this is a gray one. Um, so when you you can still see the grey because if you don't if you don't see the grey coming through you won't have a smooth cut finish what you'll have is like a flared bottom on your 
so where you get the, uh, the piece of corn around the bottom edge here it'll, be, it'll look like it's got a like a little skirt on the bottom but obviously if you if it's if you can see the uh, the edge of the the cutter uh, you won't get that and it'll be perfect and then uh, yeah that's what I just like to talk about with regarding the super corn cutter well I hope you enjoyed the video and you got a little insight into the corn cutter and how it works and also how to clean it and all the little tips and tricks that I've shown you. For those of you who haven't seen or used the corn cutter's range before, the sizes available are a 10mm, a 12mm, a 14 and there is also a maze which is a 14 by 10 mil Also the super corn cutter which is only available in a 10mm at the moment. Um, if you'd like to see any more videos regarding any of the other products that I do and you want a little bit more insight into them Just leave some comments below. I'll leave you a little time-lapse of me finishing off the mix and thank you for watching